Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Anna. We're two sisters who love handcrafting and figuring things out. Welcome everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Carolyn was looking at me like, it's time to talk now, Anna. Uh, welcome to episode 14. We've had a beautiful sunny Saturday here, crisp fall day. Been doing a lot of house chores today. You too? A lot of house cleaning. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got two nephews staying with me in a couple of days. So it's like, get those bedrooms ready. Yeah. So it is November 19th. We're coming to you from Northern California and welcome. We're so glad you're here. Yeah. So in this episode, we're going to share a finished object that Anna has. We've got our works in progress, our plans. We have a few shared supplies that we're super excited about. And of course, we'll end with our thumbs up. Thumbs up. As always down, you can find some show notes in the description box below. And if you want to scroll to any of our segments, just use that chapters features in YouTube. And just by scrolling, we'll tell you uh, where you are and you can get to things easily. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we want to share a few things that came up in our, in comments and thanks everyone for comments. As always, we just, I just gobble them up. They're so mm -hmm. fun to read. They're so fun to read. And, uh, I'm learning, I'm learning a lot from you. So thank you so much. There's uh, still some, there's a little flurry about framing. It's sort mm -hmm. of like team glass, team no yes. glass, right? And mm -hmm. team no glass. A couple of other things that came up in the comments is, uh, how much lighter, a piece is with mm, glass, like that, like weight, weight like physical weight. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that made me think because we live in an area that has earthquakes. Mm -hmm. If I was ever going to hang something above a bed or something, mm -hmm. or really, or really anywhere, right? Anywhere. It falls. Yeah, and, yeah. That I think that makes me interested in not having glass. You know, something. yeah. I hadn't thought about that. I don't really have much glass framed glass things. Do yeah, you? I don't. I don't no, yeah. I have some more like sort of stretched canvasy kinds mm -hmm. of things, or mm -hmm. I don't actually I don't have a lot on on my walls presently, mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with all this cross stitch. Still, <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to put them in bookcases. I'm jumping ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Team No Glass also is saying, just consider where you are going to hang it. Is it going to get a lot of natural light or mm -hmm. a lot of even just household light? Then you might want to consider putting glass in to protect. And then somebody said that they use a feather duster to dust that they found that that was a really mm -hmm. effective way to, if you, if your piece does start getting dusty to clean it. And I, saw, I was in a quilt store and I saw this little lamb school duster. So this probably, does, does that naturally have lanolin? I don't even know if this is real or fake. So maybe this isn't safe, but isn't it cute? It is really cute. Well, what was it sold as? Is it to, to, Get what? like little threads up or I have no idea. Was that the register? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, you're like, oh, I'll take that. So like, you know, Isn't it cute? I guess you could dust. Was so I was thinking, you know, I, sometimes I use a Swiffer and the little fibers will even on a piece of um, wood or something will come off. I'm yeah. like, I don't think those fibers are coming off. No, I like that idea. Yeah. Okay. It sort nice. of reminds me of your little spoon. I think. Yeah, that's I right. Love, I already love it. And My I'm little really, spoon. I'm not really sure. Anyway. All right. Um, and then Team Glass was saying, really and truly, if you use museum glass, you can see the stitching. You barely mm -hmm. see the glass. Just just go for it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll see. And I think, and protecting it, right, from the sun and from dust or from things in your environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have people who say, oh, I never put glass. Or mm -hmm. And people who said, like, you have to put glass. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, I, that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling a story in our last 
video about how my hands were getting so dry that the silk was snagging on my hands. And so people had a couple of brands to recommend of hand lotion, or they just said, go to your local needlework. They'll have store. They'll have some. Mm -hmm. So I am trying Stitcher's oh. lotion, the unscented. And it truly does. It really does. You want to try some right I now? I do. It yeah. does not leave a residue at all. Now, who knows? Ooh, it does, I can't feel it. There still could be something there. It's supposed to be safe. I'm always skeptical. Okay, I was doing a lot of chores today. Like, do you know when you like even like scrubbing things down or something? Yeah. And my hands are really dry. But so you see how the, this? Like, I didn't feel. I don't feel my hands are sticky at all. I do, also don't think that it really helped with my dry hands. Okay. But it gave me. I tried it a few times. It did give me sort of temporary smoothness while oh, I was okay. stitching. Okay, right, right, right. So okay. I'm still That's using good. my heavy duty hand cream, like before I go to bed or something. Stitcher's lotion, non greasy, hydrating it cream with aloe vera. It truly is non greasy. How okay. hydrating it is, mm, mm -hmm. in my experience. Mm -hmm. not but like, you're right. Even if you just put it on like right before you stitch, just to kind of soften those hard spots. <laughs> <laughs> and oh shoot i meant to bring a spool do you have a spool of 103 i can get by? one yeah keep, you just because keep also in a previous video i was saying that i just can't do that motion i can't get enough grip or strength or something to pull the top of a spool of 100 103 and i said i you know it's like i need a lever or something and someone said you can use your thumb like it. she didn't say like it's a lever <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I can totally do that. Oh, motion. what were you doing before? I was trying to go like this. Oh, were you using your thumb? Well, let along? me just see. Um, I don't. The thumb works. You great. know what? I was putting my thumbnail under there and pushing up. I was trying to do this, which was ho wholly ineffective. So maybe, maybe yeah. that's hard for thumbnail. everybody. Yeah. That was. Exciting. Oh yeah, that was yeah. That's really Anna, exciting that's hard. for me. Good. Yeah. Good. So. Thanks, everybody. Oh, great. And I also want to thank uh, B. She sent uh, us an email, which was really great. She, after watching Anna stitch Sir Dandy. Oh, I wish we had brought your Sir Dandy to show what it is. Anyway, Sir Dandy. That she went ahead and stitched it herself, and she, and she sent us a photo of it. So it was really fun to get that email. And her Sir Dandy was beautiful. And she just said, hey, it's just inspiring. And I and I feel the same way. Like, just watching floss tubers, you get this sort of vicarious. You're like, oh, I like that. I want to stitch that, too. Yeah, so. Instagram, too. I'm, I'm still sort of puzzled at why I like it so much. I love looking at other people's things. And mm -hmm. then maybe it's sort of like when you see a movie and you've lived in that town before or something. Mm -hmm. So when someone else is stitching the same thing, it's mm -hmm. like extra fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you also know you have that shared experience if you're stitching the there same thing as, some, as somebody else has. Mm -hmm. Or even like I just know there's so many things I want to stitch, I'll never stitch them all. So also just being inspired, I, I call it vicarious stitching. I'm just like, I would love to stitch that. I probably won't, but I'm just going to enjoy you stitching it. Yeah. Yes. So there are a few people on Instagram that I love. They post almost like a daily picture. And even like, let's say they're working on one piece. I'm thinking of Doreen. Yeah, even she's if, great at that. Even if it's, she's stitching the same thing for like five days, she just posts a picture every day. And I love it because you just get to see her progress of it every day. And then you can see she puts that away and gets to, goes to, she must have some sort of rotation that she does. Yes, and she, she often will just say, I worked on the trees tonight or mm -hmm. something. So you can kind of, your eyes can kind of go to like, oh, that's what she just did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, really like that. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. okay, so it's been three weeks since we filmed last time and we've done a lot of things have been going on, which is, is true always. And I just need to report that we, <laughs> <laughs> we took 61 eighth graders to DC and we came home with 61 eighth graders and they were the same 61 mm -hmm. eighth graders. So great. we just had, I'm, sure um, had great great time. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, my thumbs up, but it, if you've never traveled with middle schoolers, it is so fun. And they're so funny. They're so fun and they were not allowed to take their cell phones. And there was a lot of like not happy students going into it. I would say 95% of them were so happy they didn't have their phones at the end of the week. Yeah. So it was really, it's a great trip. but. We made it back. It was really, really fun. A little bit tiring. So, yeah, right. So well, we missed just thinking about you. It was great. Mm -hmm. And we have Carolyn's birthday coming up very, very soon. Very so soon. So I would like to toast her. Oh, thank you, Anna. We have some hot chocolate today. Carolyn, life is just more fun with you. Oh, thank Happy you, Happy birthday. Anna. Thank you. Mm. It's that getting to be that season, the hot chocolate Delicious. Delicious. I have a little secret. I just use like the powdered hot chocolate. But put a little half and half in it. Mm. Adds like that little it's bit of richness. So rich. It adds that richness. I know. Mm. So we'll look forward to 
celebrating you more next okay. this week. Yeah. It's I know. Can't wait. All right, Anna, what are you wearing? Okay, I am wearing the tendril dress from A Verb for Keeping Warm, and you highlighted your tendril dress a while mm -hmm. back. It's really more it's of a summer one. dress. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's a dress cut on the bias, which I think I mentioned last time is mm -hmm. the thing I appreciate about it most. And it really is a summer dress, but my armholes ended up to be a little bit big, so it layers really nicely, it too. It looks super cute over a t-shirt. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mostly wear it in the summer, but every once in a while I'll throw it throw it on a pair mm -hmm. of jeans on you'll see in the catwalk. Mm -hmm. And in the summer, a, will you wear a t-shirt under it, or would you, would you just put a camisole under it that would, like have fabric under your arm. I either go, I never wear a camisole because it always makes me feel hot in the summer. <laughs> I usually just go for it in the oh. summer mm -hmm. or sometimes in the evening. I do put a t-shirt mm -hmm. if it's chilly, mm -hmm. only only for mm -hmm. chilliness. Mm -hmm. It's one of those dresses that when it's hot outside, it's just so great to wear. Mm -hmm. But I do want to wear, wear, make a second one and adjust this. I think you made yours before I made mine. And so I did raise my armhole, even though I think my armhole too is still a touch low so I, I always wear a camisole under it so there's a little bit still a little bit of fabric there yeah mm -hmm. and it's, uh, I can't remember if I've already said this made from a merchant and mill wa mills wash linen and it's really changed colors because I've washed it so many times mm -hmm. but it just doesn't matter because I like the mm -hmm. color no matter what it is mm -hmm. I mean that's part of the linen it kind of like ages and grows yeah looks great thanks good how about you what are you wearing okay, girl? I'm wearing um, the Donner sweater and it is a sweater designed again by the knitting ingenious architect Elizabeth Doherty and she just this is um for anybody out there that knows about sweater design it's called a drop sleeve <laughs> thank you yeah, it's, it's a drop sleeve it's, in fact my sleeve starts there but she does this shaping because oh, yeah. they can be really boxy and this is boxy but she does it so then your sleeves you know are a little bit form-fitting and you see there's a seam across the back I look up along my shoulders Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that also holds it um, together and it has a oh, great, pretty. kind of a great texture on here. And this is knit with a Rowan Yarns a wool. It's, it's since discontinued. It's a little bit of a Tweedy um, yarn for that. So I knit the sweater in the fall of 2017. So this one's five years old and sort of for some reason has become my camping and hiking sweater. I also mm -hmm. just kind of wear it day to day too. But anytime I go camping and hiking, I take the sweater. In fact, I'm going to put a picture. This would have been, I think that same year, either 2017 or 2018, we took a big camping trip to Death Valley. And here's just some montage of me wearing this sweater out in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a, a good, a good basic sweater. And again, um, if you don't, wear a 100% wool sweater it's incredible it's very lightweight but it keeps you warm and they're easy to pack because they can kind of fold them up yet yeah, they keep you warm when it's cold but if it gets hot warm when it's cold or if it's warm out it doesn't make you sweaty it's hard to describe I, I hear but, so many people say it and I have a hard time wearing wool because anyway um, you're, you're so sensitive I'm so sensitive <laughs> uh but yeah, it's like so. I want I want to understand that. Now, now it could better. just be that I'm in my 60s now, and it's just like whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like the little old ladies that always have their wool suits on or whatever in British police procedurals. So maybe I'm also at that stage. No, but you've come on. So, I've, I've loved wool. I've loved a long time. Long time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll insert some version of a catwalk. Yeah. Birthday girl. Let's see that scene. Oh yeah. All right, Anna, go for it. Woo! Great. Welcome back. All right, Anna has our finished object for the week, so show us, Anna. Oh yeah, it's my project. Yeah. Today. So I <laughs> love it. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I started, I almost want to show my new start. Anyway, the colors in my new start cross stitch wise, here's how, here's what happened in my brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This fabric and this thread reminds me of a fabric that I bought a long, long time ago. Oh, so I while went, you were stitching. While I was stitching. It was mm. like, there was something about the color combination that just brought this fabric up for me. And so then I went and found this fabric and I just had a, I had a little bit of it and it was sitting next to this mm. fabric. I just had a little bit of that and I'm like, I'm going to combine mm. that to mm. make a project bag. I'm still using that great tutorial from Elizabeth mm. Ann Penn Stitch. Mm -hmm. So, because I was starting a sampler for a black sampler September. Mm -hmm. So 
this is how it turned out. And, and you make just, such good fabric choices. What's your, your you. liner? I put a little, it's just a oh. solid black, which I also had. And then I put another little stripe. It's hard to see. Another there. stripe of that black and white inside. So this will be my... Is that what you're keeping your Black Sampler September project black in? Black Sampler September nice. bag. There is one issue. Mm -hmm. This bird, this bird's head got chopped off. I usually don't worry too much about mm -hmm. that kind of thing, but now I kind of want to do something silly, like put, put a bird head. <laughs> I don't know. You need to get like a, a pin of a bird or something. Right. You know, it doesn't really bother me because you think he's actually, or she is like peeking inside the bag. Taking okay, let's go it. with Let, that. Let's think of her like the little bird is peeking let's inside. Let's go with that. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy deciding what I'm going to put on each zipper mm -hmm. as I make project bags. And I mm -hmm. think this one's like calling for like a big black pom-pom or something. Uh, uh, so oh, I would do pom-pom. I wouldn't do black. I would do like a hot pink oh, that or would be something good. Yes. just to like a pop of color. Yes. Totally do a pom-pom. Okay. I, I love that idea. So I've had this fabric for a long time and I love it. And I'm just so happy I had kind of just enough yeah, to make a project bag. I think this is where, how I'm going to make most of my project yeah. bags as I find fabric scraps from yeah. other things. Just okay. I love her tutorial because I feel like this bag is the perfect size. It is for me. Yeah, your eight and a half by 11 pattern fits in here nicely, I think. And it's just like you can even put this in another bag easily. Yeah, that just turned out great. Do you know why you had bought this fa fa fabric originally? I think, and the reason it was top of mind too, I think because I had made the pencil cases with students about a month oh. ago. I think I had bought some, because both of this is, what's that kind of fabric called? Not the bar cloth. Mm. Canvas? Yes. Yeah. It will be labeled canvas at a, at a, at a fabric mm -hmm. store. And that's a nice weight for our pencil mm -hmm. cases. And so I think we had... I had used some and I just had a remnant left basically. And did you, because it is heavier fabric, you, you also put interfacing. In I just wanted yeah, to go for it. it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, thanks. I love really project bags. I love seeing people's project bags and I love when people show project bags. It's just a great way to highlight fabric. Yeah. Really, Anna, that's a great combination. Thanks. Yeah. Good. All right. Do you want to start then with um, our Black Sampler September? Okay. So we were talking about some possibilities in our last video mm -hmm. of how we were both really interested in stitching this and we had a couple of different kinds of linen and we were maybe i can't remember if we said on the video or after the video like we'll each stitch half and mm -hmm. then we'll trade and everything and the <laughs> next morning i woke up and i'm like i i i, I want to do this on oyster cream i do not want to do it on different colors and you don't really you're not sure you want to stitch the alphabet. alphabet i'm like why am i going to ask carol to stitch the alphabet so she can stitch it to my hat it's anyway so funny how we can just talk ourselves up like in the video and then i was next really day, excited and then the next day we're like we're not doing that <laughs> Okay, I haven't. We haven't seen each other. Here is where I am, and this cloister cream, which well, I get. Describe again the, well, how the cloister cream works. All right. So the warp and the weft are two different colors. I think the most obvious things are the white, the bits of lighter white, and if the selvages were here, and then the white is vertical. So the white is the vertical. So it's the warp. Anyway, it has a real weight to it. It does. And there's just something about the variation in the in the fabric itself that I I, I just find absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, this is beautiful. Thank you. And oh, I'm loving yeah. the coverage. I'm using the Gloriana. You know, everybody, I, re I really wish you could see this live because I'm not sure the camera really picks up the variation in the fabric. I'm going to put it up close and see if you can start to see some of that variation. This is beautiful, Anna. Thanks. I, what I, um, count is it? Was it 38? So, was it 38? Yeah, I think the excess commodities fabrics are, oh. instead of 36, they're 38, or instead of 40, they're, 30, they're I think they're smack dab in the mm -hmm. middle. It feels a little tighter to me, or a little smaller to me than mm -hmm. 36, so I, I'm guessing 38. Mm -hmm. and, and how are you feeling about the Gloriana? Great. I'm enjoying that. It's just fun to try a new thread, mm -hmm. and it, it is also snacking on my <laughs> I these little sort of pom pomish kinds of flowers right here have got to be maybe they're carnations. One of my favorite mm -hmm. motifs I've I've uh, they're I stitched like, they're in my fun to stitch cross stitch career. I know they're fun to stitch too. Okay, so I yours. okay so I went a total different direction that you did. 
Do you I, mean start in a different place? I started with the center motif here. Oh, that that looks pretty. I started with the center motif and worked this way. And Anna's working down this way. So I'm using Wood Smoke by Lakeside Linen. And this is 36 count. And I'm using the, oh, that kind of the color does kind of blow out. And I'm using the MPI, their black silk, which I believe is 993. So MPI. pretty. I, I, I know we often tend to lean towards lighter fabrics. Mm -hmm. but we this do. Fabric, I love I, this. I just... While I was stitching with it, I thought I felt like I saw a touch of rose. Like occasionally, I feel like I see a little bit of pink in this brown. Now, I, it could just be my imagination, but I see oh, that. I, know. I think that makes sense. And the other candidate, I, it was a, a like a. a, a pea green yeah and i was really close to doing it but in the end that was a 32 count and this was a 36 and i wanted to stitch one strand so i thought i would and i thought the black i wanted a little heavier coverage so i went with this for the 36 and i'm really really happy with the color combination i only stitched on it for a couple days before i went to dc and then <laughs> oh my gosh in dc okay it's so fun but we, you you wake up at like 6 45 and you start getting the kids up and then you go to bed at like 10. so it's just like boom right okay. you're ready to really go to bed not even stitch yeah at all well i'm okay. really liking the way that's so, looking and now now that i'm back and kind of ann and i are just about to start our thanksgiving week break so i'm this is something i really want to work on okay while i'm in november so it's kind of kind of be my next kind of my focus this is what I worked on most, I would say, since mm -hmm. our last video. And I and I intentionally went a different direction than I thought you would go because I often when we're stitching, if we because we both typically go the same way, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun if we go different ways so we can see different it develop in different ways? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Well, All right. see you next fun. time. I'm so glad you Anna suggested this one and I'm so glad you did because I, I really am enjoying that. And I'm using oh, I gotta say. I'm not going to show, but I taped I am such my a pattern pieces of that. together. I need to give a gift for class. Huge, huge difference. I, that has been great. And I think I showed before. I just like the whole taping process. It reminds me of taping pattern, sewing patterns together. It's just it was fun. Nice. At our school, we have a big sanding table that we can work at and a paper cutter. So I was like paper oh, cutter. Nice. I had my double sided tape out. It was really, it was fun. All right, next. Oh, okay. I'm going to uh, yeah. talk about my Jane Hardy. And here, I know I show her every time, but I just want to make sure everyone knows the pattern. This is Jane Hardy, 1840, and it's designed by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And I'll put a progress picture here of where I was last time. And here I am now. Oh my. I know. I finished all of the motifs around the house. And I'm now working on the animals and the grass. I'm gonna keep the corner out Hello. of the hot chocolate. Oh yeah, that's fine. You can dye it a little bit with hot chocolate. <laughs> so, oh Carol, and I just like this more and more every time I see it. I can only imagine how you feel. The these animals. <laughs> see if I just fold it. <laughs> They're just a riot. Like this girl, I don't know if she drew them, if she was using patterns. Um, can you hold this side for a second? Sure. And, and this is one thing I love about stitching. Like I'll look at a pattern and no matter how closely I'm looking at the design, when you stitch it, you see all these details. Like you just get to know it so much better. True. And I love that process. I love that process. Oh, I'm stitching this animal. I'm like, is this like a sway back old donkey? Like <laughs> trying to figure out what all the animals are. Of course, this is like a little dog down here. This is a cat with these like neon orange eyes. So it's a little bit of like evil cat. But the animals, I could just imagine her having so much fun yeah. with those. They're pretty expressive. I do like their shapes. And I love filling. I have not that grass because you have this sort of moment mm -hmm. of, ex of excitement when you're stitching an animal. And then you have this sort of like pause where you fill in mm -hmm. around it. And it's feeling, mm -hmm. it makes me kind of want to do an all over stitch. I've been eyeing a, um, what is it? A peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. And that's an all over stitch. I'm a little bit curious. Uh, about that. I remember when you mentioned that before, or maybe it was just you and I talking, maybe. you said you might think of doing that one on green fabric, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe. do the, the I would full do, coverage. I like that feel of full coverage. Now, I'm really curious about Jane and how she stitched this because you can see this side, her motifs are all packed together. 
But then on this side of the house, there was oh. a lot more breathing space. So they're yeah. much more open. So I'm curious, like, did she do her border first? And did she start with this side and work on the house? Or did she sort of spread things out, work on the house, and then go and holy crap, I got to fit everything out. <laughs> like, so I'm just curious, like you start to, th I start to think about the stitcher because it's not symmetrical. Was that by design? Was it by accident? Which way did she Can go? Can I see your chart, your chart for a second? Of course. Because I hadn't noticed that on the chart. I get it. It's like one of those things when you stitch, oh, but yeah. I'm really thankful for Jane because the, the side that's more open, I'm seeing these areas in here as a canvas that I'm going to personalize this some way. I'm going to put okay. my I'm going to put my initials in, and then I'm going to pick a motif. I'm kind of look through the, some of the motif books and just pick a motif that I think represents me, and add that here because I feel like Jane and I are such good friends now. I don't think she would mind. I don't think so either. I th in fact, I think she, she would be I'd happy have, about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jane Hardy, 1840, and I'm already feeling a little sad because I know I'm coming to an end. I don't really have that much more to do. I have the bottom of the grass. I have two more animals, two more funky animals and grass. Yeah. My personalization and then it's done. We'll see how much stitching we do this week. Yeah. You could finish it really yeah. soon. Right. So Jane Hardy, 1840. Awesome. All right. We'll move on to our fruits of plenty. Mm -hmm. We are giving each other an assignment each time we tape and we're, mm -hmm. we both work on the same thing mm -hmm. and you, you're giving an next assignment. I am. Mm -hmm. This time we were working on this row of floral, mm -hmm. like viney florals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see yours. Why don't you go first? Because I just showed something. Okay. I, it's funny. I sometimes really get in a groove on this. This time I was like, I don't know. I did a little here, a little there, but I didn't do anything more than what we said. And uh -huh. it just kind of it looks good though, Anna. Yeah, I, yeah, it's fine. I just didn't real. I don't. I feel like I don't really have much to say. Just kind of. Uh -huh. Just kind of did it. You did it. Yeah. It's real. But are are you still getting that feeling that you look at and you're like, I can't believe I'm I'm making this. Oh, for sure. Even. Even if I see it from afar and I haven't stitched on it for a long, like a week or something, I'll be like, oh. Who made that? Where'd that come from? Really nice. Yeah. I'm, I, oh, I put this on Instagram, but I, mm -hmm. it, it, really, these are both Jacob. It t I was stitching on this for a couple of days before I realized, oh, oh Anna. this is inverse. <laughs> I, I must so like this color com or this com kind of uh, value difference. Oh, that's going to look really pretty if you put them together. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. And I mean, this does have I some of those. I this a big pillow, maybe. No, you're not. No. <laughs> because it, the size is going to be wrong. It's, it would be this. That's what I like about it. It would be this pillow that would be like. I know, but like what if it was like on your bed? Or I don't know. I probably won't. <laughs> But you probably, you might, no, you I'll might hanging them together just like Carolyn suggested. <laughs> You're gonna do it. I'm gonna be like, oh, I love that idea. Like, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> That's right. Let's see yours. Uh huh. So I had a breakthrough with this organic. I at first, um, I'm gonna get myself organized. It's gonna There's just so good. much. Drink. There's so much. Okay, can you hold that side, please? Yes. Okay, I have to make sure my mirror image. This was just. A real pain for me and I think because it was like four pages coming together and I didn't hadn't taped it together and it was just like where am I what connects to what and for some reason that didn't happen on this and this just flowed I had so much fun great stitching that yeah that's good and I think I even came down I think I may have done a little bit more of my squirrel down there I can't remember where he was so that I just sat down I think I did it the, just the first two nights after we flossed you before we went to D I went to DC and it was so fun and it just went so quickly. I was surprised. I'm so glad. Yeah. So we'll have to wait. You know, next time we get to a vine, you'll have to see, mm -hmm. is that just a <laughs> like, <laughs> uh huh? Or are vines your friends now? Or am I getting more used to it? I don't, I don't know what. Okay. Um, Anna, what I want us to do now, it's, it's exciting. I always, she's not going to like it. What I want us to do now uh, is I want us to do some infrastructure. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I know this is just me. No, that's okay. So we've got these concentric octagons here and here and this is the one and i think you were playing with filling in part of it let's actually right. take a look at yours in jacob's two color version Oop. this piece is filled in whereas our one color version doesn't have it and we were i think i think we're going to do that too 
So I, my first, I think my first interesting because I don't know if we'll be able to do the infrastructure of both of those octagons. Okay. So I'd say let's work on both of them and start on the outer rings and sort of move in. Or oh, okay. Because I want to have I want to have this the outlining around the outside, so that will help us if we want to move down here. But it would also help us if one of us wants to decide to do an interior motif. So oh, I, so you mean you might even. I, I, no, no, I'm thinking oh, for, later, for later, for later, for um, later assignment. So I feel like getting these rings in at least the first couple okay. of levels of both. Outside in, both, both. Outside in, working on both of them. And then I think that will give us good things to count off of. Okay. You know what I mean? I think there will be good signposts for us. Great. All right. That's I'm where we are. For it. And then the other thing I was thinking about doing is on this side, you also have already finished this bit right here. And I haven't quite finished that triangle or down there. So if okay. I have a little extra time, I'm going to fill, try to fill that in and catch up with you. Well, I have some chevrons left on that side, but you're right. I okay. keep holding it upside down. Yeah, I, but I did yeah. the triangle. Let Wait. me see where you are. So I haven't finished. I see. Yeah. But that might also be an interesting assignment is to, uh, to have a photo of each other's and try to catch up where one person is ahead in an area. Right. Because I out. haven't done my squirrels. Mm-hmm. And I, and I haven't done that. I haven't done my stars. I haven't done my stars around my tree. So that might be another interesting assignment one time is to do a little catch up. Okay. So, but so this time it's, the it's octagon infrastructure on both sides. And it's fine if you don't get all the way in, but let's get maybe the, at least the first couple so that we can count off of those yeah. to move around. And one of the reasons I have a hard time doing the structure is that I feel like I like looking at things next to it to make sure I've counted correctly. Mm. So, uh, but I will f need to d figure mm. out other ways to feel confident mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I've counted correctly. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I can make sure they're lining up across or something yeah. like that. And I think you'll also know if it doesn't join up as you go around, if you do a full concentric circle. Oh, that makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm almost the opposite way. I like I, I like having that infrastructure because I count off of that. Definitely Joan was saying that with mm -hmm. hers. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Nice. That's, that, 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 that's the beauty of taking turns making the, the choices. Okay. All right. Seasons of the Heart. Winter. So we've been using the oh, Katie Strachan okay. silk conversion and Anna. here's where I am. I know. It is sweet. I I had a couple of things. I was I am enjoying the sparkle of the snowflakes, which is really hard to see on camera. Uh -huh. Like I'm gonna make all the snow. That snowman's gonna be sparkly. That's that <laughs> snow under the house is gonna be sparkly. <laughs> but guess what? It didn't show up well enough. So, so it's, I it's did interesting a lot of that the, the snow. sparkle is it be, probably because the swa I forget the name. Swa surfing so, is very fun. it's the very white fun. Is the, less mm -hmm. yes so. Mm -hmm. Snowflakes it is. They're going to sparkle, sparkle. I'm really enjoying deciding which red to use. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of collage decisions. Like, I'm going to do two mm -hmm. of this, three of mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I actually put the cardinal in at the top of the taller tree and then took it out. I had it in for a couple of days. Really? It is. So why? It's funny. I There was something about the shape that I want to play around with. I... Do you think you're going to leave it out or, or you think you're going to look for another bird? I mm, I can see that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Brenda Gervais actually used that shape of cardinal and it, they do look like so a little fluffy and yeah. uh, sweet, but there's something, I might do a slightly different shape, a red bird um, in here. Good idea. Here. Good idea. Or maybe we'll have no bird. Last time, Anna, you talked about redoing the sashing around the windows. Did you do that? Yes, yes absolutely. You did. Yeah, because I was going to say it looks really good. It, it looks just, really crisp. It looks I really crisp. felt like I, that's where I started. I started in the center of this piece. So I started with one of those windows and my tension changed once I got the hang of working with the goblins. So I thought it was worth it. It was not, it did not, I mean, maybe it took an hour. It was no big deal to take it out. Although don't you feel like when, when you're almost finished with a piece and you have to take something out, you're like, if I cut my line, I know. Okay. I know. then we'd figure it out. I know. Okay. Sometimes I'm just, I'm going to have a true confession right here. I've never done this, but when I walk by like one of those red handles that you pull for the fire alarm, I want to pull it. 
That's why they put glass over them because I think that is a human uh, instinct. Our one at school doesn't have glass. Oh. And, I'm, and I'm never going to do it. Don't worry. I'm never going to do it, but I have that mm -hmm. instinct. Maybe before and, you retire. And then, <laughs> and then sometimes like when I'm cutting with scissors, I'm like, what if I just cut in? <laughs> Yeah. What does this say about my personality? It's like destructive. I don't know. Like, again, like, I'm never like, going gonna... to. It's like a little bit of a, a little zest, like excitement zest. Know. That's it. Okay. You're so I'm never going to do that because I'm like, <laughs> ruin it. But I have that. So it's like, we're going to have to find just... something in real life that'll give you a little thrill like that. That I know. You wouldn't get fined $5,000 <laughs> for. I wouldn't be put in jail or like ruin a piece. So Anna, it's really looking nice. I, I, have, I haven't done deadly on this, so I have nothing more to show. It's fun watching yours. Yeah, it's sweet. Really nice. Really nice. No, I'm sorry. I know. Remember we had big plans. I'm like, oh, we'll get it done by Thanksgiving. We'll be making our pillows. Yeah. I might make my pillow. We'll see. I know. But yeah. I, want, I, I want to do it um, with you. So I'll press. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll yeah, see how the weeks go. Right. Because we have more pillows yeah. in our future. We have more pillows in our future. Okay. So. Oh, well, you've got some knitting. I've got my, some knitting. All right. So I've been working on the baby Kylie sweater for my third granddaughter. And last time I showed you the ones that both Anna and I had made for our other granddaughters. And here's just a clunky photo of it. It's a great yoke button down sweater. It fits the kids really well for a long time. So here's a progress picture of where I was last time. I was working on the yoke. And here <laughs> I I've, I've finished the body. There'll be button bands in red that come down. This is this was a good. I knit a lot of this when I was in DC. It's a good travel project. I, I like that. Just love this pattern. I that do is too. so sweet. I do. I do too. Okay, got a problem. Uh oh. Mm hmm. So this was this is uh, my one of my son's schools used to say this is a logical consequence. Uh, I just started the sweater because I'm like I need a project. Let me just go in my stash and get a couple skeins of yarn and get going. So I'm matching this this very purpley undertoned red with this speckled and then I'm like I don't have enough of this <laughs> did you even think of that when you started it didn't even occur to me and then when I started like I finished the body I still have to do the sleeves um that's why I started putting this on I'm like oh I'm starting to run out of yarn I'm like no way and then when I did look at the materials for the pattern you do need um more than one skein of this one so I'm like okay I'll order another one so I did it's this is nerd string fingering but look, it's really a different color. Yeah. This version has so much purple in it, and this really, I don't really doesn't. It's still beautiful, but it's a different color. Yeah. So here are my choices, and I wanted to get your thoughts, Anna, and also please, viewers, please, friends, chime in. All right, here are my options. Uh, option one is I as I start to work the sleeves, there's something you can do to try to gradiate the yarn. So like you'll knit a couple rows with this, a couple rows with this, a couple rows with this, and it starts to blend. Or maybe you would do like four rows of this, one of this, three of this, two of this, and then you'll eventually end with your new color. So you sort of, it's kind of like a way of blending. Have you tried it before with this much difference? No. Okay. Okay. So that's just option one. Option two would be the sleeve already has some red going here. So to start a little bit with the red, but then transition into this Cosmic Wonder Dust, yeah, that's the name of it, and do the sleeves more in the speckled one. So it'd look a little funky, you'd have some red here and then color blocking and whether I would do maybe a few stripes to pull off this design and then go the white the rest of the way down. That's option two. That's a lot of detail, isn't it? <laughs> Are you asleep yet? This was interesting to me. Option three is just to be like, whoops, and order a second skein of this in the new color and just start it again. Oh. And just be like, yep, lesson learned. This was fun to knit, but doesn't work. Okay, so blend the reds, color block so that it's more of the speckled white on the arms, or start it again by ordering a second skein of this red. Do you want me to weigh in now or do you want me to wait? No, weigh in now. I'm super fond of like a baseball mm -hmm. style tee. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, make those sleeves white. Yeah. Would you start them? And I actually think that's what Cal I'm leaning toward because I thought I could, I, I'm happy to start it again, but then I'm like, well, why not just finish this one 
And even if it's like or even not, one one yes do one and even if it's not great it's still like exactly. a, a super cute functional sweater and then I could do something else. Would you bring the red down a little bit further before or would you start it right? Would you pick up right here? I think I need to pick up at least a little bit with the red. Yeah, and I'll have you know I could get it down to about you know here and then start. Why don't you make a drop sleeve? <laughs> drop sleeve a yoke drop sleeve. Would you do any striping? Or would you just go boom right from the red to the wonder dust? Can you please call it wonder dust, cosmic wonder dust? I well, I think you're gonna once you have a row or two of the wonder dust in, mm -hmm. I think you're gonna I think that's gonna sort of tell you, oh, that'd be cute as a stripe, or whether it just keep mm. going. Okay, so do that. All right, so I'll do look. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my bands in the red that I have, and then I'm gonna weigh this, break it into two balls, so I know how much maximum I have on each sleeve. And I'll go from there. Okay, great. Thank you. So cute. If anybody else feels like super strongly differently, tell us. Yeah. But I know. I was kind of bummed, but it makes it. I think I ordered this. I think I got this yarn maybe like years ago. So there's and that's no the reason beauty to of dying. It. Yeah, it's just it, the. There's gotta be some color change. Yeah. All right, the baby Kylie sweater. Any knitters out there? Really, we both highly, highly recommend it. Okay, I do. All right, let's plans. talk a little bit about plans because okay, your birthday you. is mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on a birthday I'm start? I'm totally going to do a birthday start. Um, I don't, I'm not working that day. It's a day off. I am going to pretty much do nothing that day. I'm going to go out to dinner mm -hmm. in the evening. I just want a day off. I, I was thinking back. I think the last time I had a day where I had nothing I had to do was in September. Wow. I know. It's been a busy, busy fall. Carolyn has a, a, a name for a day when you just do, do nothing. Don't you call it a zip do da day? Zip do da day. And especially when I was raising the boys, I had two zip da. I would do my birthday and Mother's Day would be my zip doodah days. So I'm really going to do zip doodah on my birthday. I just want to stitch. I just want to stitch and so knit fun. and craft. So I have um, a start I'm going to do, mm -hmm. and I'll post it on Instagram. But if you want to guess, do you have oh, any I, ideas? I definitely have a guess. What's your guess? Quaker drawing. Interesting. Okay. Oh, Anna thinks that's, quick, that's a drawing. pretty good poker face. Okay. All right. All right well, now it. I'm going to. Okay. But Thanks I, for putting it up on Instagram. That'll be fun. I'll post it for, yeah, for fun. Okay. And hopefully this video will be, oh, the video will be out before then. So good. Okay. And then we were thinking about, um, are we ready to pull out Christmas stitching? Where are you in the process? It's so funny because I started stitching when we're talking about stitch anniversaries two Christmas, like two, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. So it was around Christmas. And the first thing I finished was a little Christmas sampler. Mm -hmm. And I started a few other little Christmas things, but I haven't, I haven't looked at, I don't think I looked at them last Christmas. Like they're in a drawer. So I can't wait to sort of pull them out and sort of see what I have and finish a few things. Did you finish the little, the sampler your, that you started last Christmas? Two Christmases. Or oh, did you, oh, so you finished it too? That's the, the flat fold one. Yeah. Okay. For some reason I thought you had started it and then finished it last Christmas. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be fun to pull out. Well, your, maybe I did. And then we flat folded. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that might be true. Anyway, I I know that I've started some other Christmassy things, mm. and I have also have some charts that are related to Christmas. All this saying, I'm starting to get excited about that, and so I think in a week or so I'm okay, gonna start. pull that stuff out. Okay, good. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start Christmas stitching. I'm starting to get the vibe too, but I'm gonna finish Jane Hardy first. And I, actually, I don't think I'm so into her right now. I don't think that's going to take me that long. But I figure I want to realize that's been such a big focus piece for me and so much fun. I want to kind of get closure on that. And then I'm going to start pulling okay, some Christmas stuff. I, I, I don't know I, yet, yet which one I'm going to start with. In fact, I might, I'm going to probably also go back to get my winter going as well. Because yes. that's also, that also has yes. a good Christmas vibe to it. Yes. Oh. And I need to make a Christmas project bag. Mm. Oh yeah, I have some. I have some good Christmas fabric for that. So too, we'd love to hear. Do you have you started to get the holiday bug, and have you started stitching? And if so, what are you working on? Yeah, it seems like some people have already with? started. Yeah, and I know if you don't celebrate Christmas, you're like, I wonder if you don't celebrate Christmas if there's another holiday around this time, yeah. or do or you, or if you like live in a kind right, of like winter, more of a winter theme, or you're just like, I'm not interested in any of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> moving on to something else I'm, yeah. sam I'm sampling yeah okay so this something about a photo of okay yeah okay so one of my good friends from childhood who still lives in the dc area where we where we grew up sent me a picture 
of the exterior of a building, the National Museum of Women in the Arts, which I have never been there. It's, it is under renovation right now. And so to cover some of the scaffolding, there is this huge- I saw that. It didn't occur to me though what it was. It's cross stitch. Oh, So Carolyn! we're, we're going to put a picture. Okay, up. let's put a picture right now. Because you'll see it's huge. And I, and I was like, what is the thread on something that covers the side of a building? It's pink netting. It is by um, an artist. Her name is Katerina uh, Sibuka. And she is Austrian. And if you go to the museum website, the National Museum of Women oh. in the Arts, is a little video of her making it. Oh. And, and, it, and it, it, it shows her feeding the fabric out a second story window oh. and then putting it on the grass. It's really quite beautiful. And it, it's part of a series that she is called Solange, which means as long as. And her hope for the side of this building was that it would promote dialogue and awareness of gender inequalities. So it's like, I, I literally have the goosebumps right now. I, I oh. it's really, the, the scale of it is so interesting to me. If it's, if it's the one I was looking at, I'm just feeling that sorrow of missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. So well, when yeah. you're responsible for a lot of children, sometimes you don't really have seriously. <laughs> we, like you, it, it's a big responsibility to take other people's we, children. We on did a trip. see a completely albino white squirrel. Oh, cool! Is that a consolation? Okay, cool. I can't wait to see this picture to see if it's what because I you would keep see, I kept seeing this thing and it was was is it a, a woman's face? No. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe it's something different. It's words. Oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll see. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, in fact, yeah. Okay. So cool, Anna. So cool. Yeah. Did, you, did you thank your friend? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, friend. Thank you, childhood friend. <laughs> um, the other thing that came up for me uh, that I, I, I want to develop a hashtag for those of us who either started cross-stitching for the first time during the start of the pandemic or came back to cross-stitching because so many commenters mm. say something like, I started cross-stitching too during the pandemic, or I cross-stitched in the 80s and came back to it during the pandemic. And so I'm like, hashtag 2020 stitcher mm -hmm. or something like that, which we call ourselves because mm -hmm. there's a huge group of us mm -hmm. who are in that category. Mm -hmm. Or maybe nobody else is interested, but mm -hmm. I might start putting that hashtag on. Good, or that, that would be a good one on um, Instagram to do like a, a poll or just have people put in ideas. Okay. Yeah. Cause it, cause it is true. Like it's a whole, it's like, you know, we have like Gen Z, Gen X, like we're Gen pandemic or something like Gen 2020 yeah. of that. Good. All right. Any ideas? Let us know. Cheers. All right. Let's do a couple quick shared supplies. So Anna and I both got the Katie Strachan kits for, I forgot the name of this one, Joy and Good Cheer. So here's the pattern by Brenda Gervais. All right, I ordered this pattern on Thursday afternoon. I was going to say, from, I know, you, from Farm you Girl. You texted me to bring it, to farm, I, I, it today. Yes, Farm, oh my farm Girl Dry Goods. And so I texted Anna, I'm like, bring your pattern because I haven't got, I just ordered mine. So here's your kit. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So we, I had these grand plans of like getting on while the kids were working in class and order them. And I don't know what that day was so busy. I, it was like four in the oh, that's afternoon. That's right, we were talking about It was about like four in the afternoon. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to order it. But they, she still had pre-orders for that. So look at these silks. Those colors. I saw these colors. I don't know, that yellow with the green. Of course, that turquoise and red. So beautiful. So beautiful. And then we got some beads that's part of it. I can't remember where the beads are. Uh, I, I think they maybe are part of the plants or the, something. The maybe I'm guessing maybe in here in the red. We'll see. Oh, thank you, Katie. So uh, thank you again. Uh, just you a just, beautiful kit. Yeah, I just I, I feel like every time I see your, your color combinations, Katie, if you're watching, yeah, it's like it's just a little like sharing a little genius with uh, us all. Yeah, it's sharing a little genius. This is now my third silk kit, and I love it because now I also feel like I'm getting a good silk stash and i know i definitely want to do like my own conversion and what about the fabric because i don't know i don't remember which fabric our winter is uh -huh. on. 
I was I was very curious to see how the blues were going to, the blue was going to compare with this blue. This one looks a darker, darker, mm -hmm. bluer, mm -hmm. something. Very pretty. I'm seeing this for the first time, so I'm yeah. So we unwrap and see what our. Oh, and again, I like it must just be a, a tiny bit of thread. Yeah, it's so thoughtful. Which is great. Oh, should we, should we open up? Ooh, look. At So here's the fabric. Maybe a little, a little darker. Yeah, definitely. A little redder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be really pretty. So I have to decide when I start my Christmas holiday yes. stitching. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. So open it up. Do I want to start with this? Do I want to go back and look through my patterns and see? So that's definitely, just, I don't know. definitely gonna so, be an option. I'm so these silks off the spool and these color combinations yeah. are just yeah i think i'm going to start this next yeah we'll see all right thank you again katie for your your expertise and your beautiful packaging and color eye and attention to detail yeah wonderful and thanks for ordering okay it was like so late in the day oh my it was funny because i ended up having time a little like midday or something and mm -hmm. i texted carol and like you know any news yet because i thought i would order us up but I didn't want to order because she was gonna order two and if I ordered mm -hmm. it, it all it all it worked out, out. Great. it all worked out great I know sometimes you, you just start going with your school day and like everything else just like goes out of your head definitely in my phone I don't take my phone into the classroom so it's in my workspace and sometimes I'll come up there this has ever happened to you and it's just like you have like 156 texts you know because something has blown up on one of your group texts and yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I have all these little things I do. If I do have something important that I need to do during the school day, because you just, once the school day starts and you know, you're just with the kids and you're just going, going, going. Mm -hmm. It's like, I have like sticky notes yeah. that I put in particular areas and have a keyword on them. Yeah. To try to I put them on my, or on my or laptop lunch or something. Yeah. On your lunch yeah. Box. yeah. Good. Okay. You want to show the, the next thing okay. that we have? And the other thing that we purchased and we purchased this together is the kitten stitcher sampler box it's heavy we have not opened it yet mm -hmm. and i'm just mm -hmm. i'm just we haven't decided when we're going to open it we'll have to find the right time to open it where we can really sit down like savor everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we can and then we'll report back then we can fight for who gets mm -hmm. to start what last time I, she sent out kitten stitcher sent out a email a couple of days ago just saying she still had a few more boxes and i think she said as people started to show them on instagram or on their floss tube People are coming back and going, oh, actually, I want one, I want one. Um, so I think there are a few more left. So I can't, I can't wait to see what's well, we do have. We both have some time off around Thanksgiving, so Hopefully maybe we'll have just... Yeah, although yeah. We, we will have lots of other family members around as well, and that might be... Fun. Well, it, it could also be really fun to open them and have, like, different people say, uh -oh, like, what do you like? You know, just to see. I think that could be fun, just Let, a topic of conversation. Let's see if we can get <laughs> Not any. that we did. Let's see like, if we can get anybody. Oh, sorry, I just... Yeah, we can uh, almost so get them enough. spread out and just see what people think. Okay, I can't wait to see what's inside of that. Right. All right, that brings us to our thumbs up. Okay, why don't you go first? Okay. All right, so um, a couple thumbs up is our camper van, and we're going to leave tomorrow just to go for a quick meet another sister and just do a one night of camping and then come back, all come back down together for Thanksgiving. Um, our van is called Teensy, and <laughs> About 11 months ago, my husband ordered California vanity plates for the van. And we're like, are we ever going to get them? Well, the plate showed up like two days ago. So here's a picture of our van Teensy with her plates. And we had to just get the spelling that we could get. Um, and I just love Teensy. Just big old thumbs up. It's just so fun to travel in her. So that's one of my thumbs up. My second thumbs up is just traveling in D.C. with eighth graders. It's, as Anna said, it's a lot of responsibility. And I'm sort of on two um, very different, like, I feel so responsible for other people's children. So in fact, almost so much so, I don't always like going on these kinds of trips because I feel so responsible. But then on the other hand, these trips are such great opportunities for them to have freedom. So I'm like kind of on one end of the spectrum, I'm like, you should go and do this independently. Like sometimes in the museums, like I just want them to go and be independent. Or sometimes our meals, we'd be at these kind of really interesting urban food markets. And I'm just like, get a buddy and go. 
So it's that trade off of like always making sure I ha have all the students I'm responsible for, but w giving them independence. Yeah, knowing that's what's good for them. And uh, you spend time in a smaller group of kids where we do all of our, we do all public transportation and everything. So you really get to know those kids. You get to know all the kids, but those 13 kids in particular, you really get to know. And it's so fun getting to know them outside the math class. But then last week when we were back in class, you also have kind of a little bit of a different relationship with them once you get back and it's and it's great we have all these like sort of inside jokes and so it just it was a great trip really exhausting for the adults but they had a great time and we had fun too because of that okay and the last thing is also related to school yesterday friday we have something every year well, although we haven't been able to have it since the pandemic um it's called grandparents day and now it's grandparents or special friends so the students for the last two classes of the day they can have a grandparents or their special friend come with them and good Gracious. I taught one of the two periods at the end of the day. We had 16 grandparents in the room. It was packed. Did the students give their grandparents their seats? Like, how do you do we, that? Oh, we had, we had like six folding chairs. We, our, our rooms opened up to like a lobby and we, everybody was just grabbing chairs and okay. just, all, all the grandparents had a chair to sit in. And I had designed this kind of just really hands-on activity that if the grandparents wanted to dive in, they could totally participate with their students or just watch their students. So we had everything from some grandparents were taking movies. Others are like doing the math too with their students. It was so fun. It sounds fun. It was a great activity. Everybody was engaged. The, the grandparents loved it. It was crazy. It was like one of those times when it's like controlled chaos in a classroom where like the kids actually really got some good math done. But it, and you, you like at the end, you can see I'm still like, I was on a high at the end of that because everybody that had learned something and the grandparents had enjoyed it and the kids had enjoyed having the grandparents there. I so, call it the happy buzz in the classroom. The happy buzz. So just thumbs up to grandparents' day. Oh, and then plus, we all get like really good snacks <laughs> afterwards. The grandparents <laughs> and the teachers. Yeah, they put out a nice little spread with like cookies and sneaky snacks. So nice, really fun. All right, those are my thumbs up. All right. Uh, interesting. One of mine is about students too. A uh, few students wrote me notes last week. Aww. Yeah, I, 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 because I, it's around Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and there's just something about seeing their handwriting mm -hmm. and seeing how they express themselves that I find really dear and meaningful. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, my second thing is just how much I enjoy walking around the block. I came home yesterday and I just before dinner and it just felt so good. And you have and a walk, really big block. We have we have a great loop that that um, yeah it takes about twenty minutes mm -hmm. to walk it and but it's just so familiar and uh, yeah it, it it brings me a lot of happiness. Mm -hmm. The last thing is related again to school and Thanksgiving break. I'm realizing. I mean, I guess I've always realized, but. I really like working hard, mm -hmm. but also having the anticipation of something fun coming up. So mm -hmm. like we have some ease in this week and some family members coming in, but it could also just be like book club that night mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that. This, and it makes me think about retirement. Like, what is going to be my working hard? What am I going to do yeah. that really feels maybe cross-stitching? Yeah. I don't know. Something that... That's a really good point, Anna, because I've been thinking, like, when will I retire also? Because actually school has been really busy this year. But I do like working hard. Like, mm -hmm. and I don't, and I, I know there's I, endless volunteer things. Yeah. I mean, there, I know that there are, we'll find something. Mm -hmm. And I, I still have some years before I retire. But, yeah, it just makes me wonder. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Although I could so fill my days with crafting you know I, I think too like people that enjoy working hard and being busy and you know that everybody has different things that they enjoy that's not like the only way to go whatever you're going to do you're going to get into it in a busy way you know what you know what I mean like, yeah I think that's probably how things will naturally flow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right right all right because I sure can stay busy in the summertime <laughs> <laughs> busy all right so until next time Happy crafting and stay curious. Bye everybody. Bye. Good to see you. Bye.